good evening everybody uh, to the last lecture of the 50 years of independence genob series uh, we have a, a very exciting speaker today it is my very very proud privilege and honor to introduce uh, dr firdosi kadri who has been the head and senior scientist Mucosal Immunology and Vaccinology Unit at ICDRB. Her work includes basic and applied immunology of infectious diseases and also large uh, scale field based clinical studies on enteric vaccines. Uh, her, her work also involves a very nice initiative which is called IDESHI, which is the Institute for Developing Science and Health Initiatives. And this was formally inaugurated a couple of weeks ago uh, in a, a complete floor at um, Mirpur. And I hear that it's a very nice premises. Uh, congratulations, Appa. Uh, so the primary focus at Aideshi is on the development of science and technology in Bangladesh and encouraging science, scientists in Bangladesh to work in the field of biomedical sciences. Uh, and a, one of the other focuses is networking with other institutions and government and the private sector. Uh, and Aideshi has been doing really well. Uh, over the last decade, uh, Dr. Firdosi Kadri has been leading the largest field studies in over millions of participants of an oral cholera vaccine in urban slums in Bangladesh. Uh, and it has been very successful, uh, not only within Bangladesh, but also globally. Her multi-directional uh, work on the cholera vaccine with the government of Bangladesh and international experts has resulted in providing evidence and also supporting the transfer of technology of cholera vaccine to Bangladesh and its production locally and will hopefully be available at a very affordable, low cost. Uh, Dr. Firdosi Kadri's studies on enteric diseases in the laboratory and field have yielded world-class results in quality and further evolve with the active collaboration with laboratories in USA, UK, and Europe. The understanding of the mucosal immunology of diseases coupled with the role of environmental and nutritional factors on immune response has resulted in better preparedness to natural infection and administration of vaccines. In addition to cholera, ETEC and other typhoid vaccines were also emphasized upon. Uh, uh, mad madam's fight against cholera and typhoid are the, which are the major diseases in Bangladesh as well as Asian and African countries with poor access to safe water, sanitation, education and medical care has been really inspirational. Uh, she has been successfully working with centers of excellence in Sweden, UK, USA in the field of proteomics, genomics and metagenomics. And this work has resulted in key features being identified that can be related to causes of propensity of infections. Uh, and the, another important work that she's been doing is the development of diagnostic tests for detection of enteric pathogens. And recently, uh, uh, Dr. Kadri has been working a lot on the COVID and they have, uh, with her team, has identified, uh, you know, the immunological aspects of the COVID infection in Bangladesh and, and and I mean, very nice publications. Uh, overall, she has 490 publications, but uh, I have some more. So she has, uh, Dr. Kadri has received numerous awards for her achievements in the field of natural infections and vaccines. These include the gold medal for outstanding research in biological sciences from the Bangladesh Academy of Science, uh, Moselio Shatter Award for Scientific Achievement by the American Society of Microbiology, Christopher and Rudolf Merui Prize, Foundation Prize, French Academy of Sciences, Professor C. N. Rao Prize for contribution to scientific research from TWAS in 200, uh, and also in 2019, the Kazi Mahbubul Award, the L'Oreal UNESCO Award for Women in Science, uh, International Awards for Outstanding Research, in vaccines and infectious, infectious work. And she has also been a recipient of the GNOB Award. We are very proud for that. Um, uh, she has been elected fellow of many societies, including uh, ASM, AM, TWAS, ITSA, BAS, INSA, and serves on the advisory boards 
including the ISDB Science, Biotechnology and Innovation Board. Bill Gates has identified Dr. Fedosi Kadri as a hero in the field and fight against the world's longest running pandemic cholera. She was, a, she was made a member of the high level panel of the UN Technology Bank, which has been set up in 2014. Dr. Kadri uh, uh, has been given the sixth uh, or she has been included in the sixth edition of Asian Scientists in the 100 list. Very recently, Dr. Kadri received the 221 Raymond Maxese Award for her lifelong commitment to vaccine research and development and has been, and that has had a tremendous impact on saving lives in the millions of people in Bangladesh. Uh, a large part of Dr. Kadri's career has been focused in developing leaders in the field of infectious disease research from different disciplines and institutions. She has inspired many young scientists through her teaching and research activities, including myself. To date, she has trained and mentored over 500 postgraduate students from Bangladesh and globally. Uh, many of these are PhD students in joint programs with universities in Sweden and Japan. Uh, Japan, Bangladesh, and USA. As a result of these training programs, large grants were received from the NIH, USA, CEDA, Sweden, Gates Foundation, Wellcome Trust, and the European Union, uh, and a network of international and national researchers have been developed. Uh, Dr. Fidosi Kadri has over 490 publications in high impact peer reviewed journals. Uh, and, and, you know, many, many of them, like in Nature Communications and other, you know, like uh, very uh, high impact uh, journals in, of infectious diseases as, as well as in vaccines. And very recently, her work uh, on the COVID-19, that has also come out in very prestigious journal, I think, including one in Nature Communications. Uh, Dr. Fedosi Kapras, uh, Kadriapa, we are so thankful that you accepted this uh, invitation to speak for us. and. We eagerly wait to hear your lecture. Thank you, Appa. Appa, up to mute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Zeba. I think you should send me this write-up because when people ask me to talk about myself, I usually don't uh, touch all the points. So I think next time uh, you must send me what you've written. Thank you so much for elaborating on everything. And uh, I think uh, what I can say is that uh, Whatever I've done is for Bangladesh, and whatever I've done is with y'all, with uh, with my superb students from the Department of Microbiology, Biochemistry, and also Genetics, and everyone else uh, in Bangladesh, and of course my foreign collaborators. So all of you share this uh, whatever I've done. Uh, without y'all, I could not have done anything. So uh, can you see my screen? Can you see the screen? No? Yes, Appa. Put on the... We can. Yeah, thank you. I'll put on the... Uh, Slideshow. Slideshow. I can't see the slideshow icon. Up a top panel at Chole Jan, top panel animation is passe. Huh? The Tajabo animation is passe. Slide show, right? Right. And the from beginning, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, I still learn from you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to, when Afat uh, and others, um, ask me to uh, talk to y'all. I always love to talk to y'all. So uh, I chose this uh, Sustainable Development Goal 3 because that is what it's all about for countries like us, uh, the developing countries. Uh, and I feel that uh, in my career, uh, <coughs> microbiologists are very important because I never differentiate between microbiologists and biochemists. So that's my problem. But I also think that uh, all of us in the biomedical science uh, need to need to meet the goals of the sustainable development goal uh, number three for achieving health and well-being. And I will try to. Can I ask uh, uh, 
who's the chair of this meeting? Abed or Ashfaq or Zeba, anyone? Can I, can I, y'all, can y'all stop me and ask me questions? I think that would be the best because I uh, put together a presentation, but y'all are most welcome to talk to me, um, request me for things, at, because this is supposed to be something that I want y'all to share with me about, you know, how we, how, how, what the role we have, our role. And I, I hope there are other younger people in the audience. Uh, who will actually see some of this. None of it is new, but I felt that uh, so it would be good if it could be uh, with question answers if you want to stop me. So I belong to the ICDDRB Infectious Disease Division. My group is called MIVU, Mucosal Immunology Vaccinology Unit. We stopped calling ourselves immunology uh, about 10 years back when we, it does not mean anything to be just immunology, but it's better to have a purpose. And, then we have Aideshi, as Zeba pointed out. And I'm very happy to be part of this lecture series of the 50 years of independence of Bangladesh. And I'm also happy to be the last one because um, I, I hope all of you will enjoy it. So um, all of you know about the uh, sustainable development goal. All my life, uh, we have been working on, on MDGs. Millennium in development goals, from there came up the sustainable development goals. And goal three is very important for us because it's healthy lives and it covers all the aspects of our public health, microbiology, biochemistry, genetics, biomedical sciences. So I will, since I've been working on cholera for over 30 years, I, I always use the example of cholera and uh, it's an endemic disease. Uh, Ashfaq, you all know you've been in ICGGRB, how the patients come into the hospital uh, almost half dead with half their body weight loss. Three fourths of the body weight can be lost also because of the purging and the amount of fluid they lose. And then it still is from that time onwards, it's an ancient disease, still is a cause of severe dehydrating diarrhea. And it can lead to death very quickly if not uh, efficiently managed. And we have globally many cases. In Bangladesh also, there's a lot of cases. And deaths in Bangladesh is supposed to be only around 5,000. That's the recorded deaths. Because in Bangladesh, you can have ORS and also treatment that has gone out from ICD-DRB to all the health facilities in Bangladesh. But still, we suffer from cholera. And uh, a cholera patient can uh, come to the hospital and be sick, but it can be a very, very tough time for the family also, because one cholera patient in the hospital means three other people in the, in the household who can be, uh, also have cholera in some way or not. So it's a very contagious disease, fecal oral contamination. And in Bangladesh, we all still, we have like 30% you know, cholera patients of 120,000 patients who come to the hospital. And, 70% are adults and 30% children. So cholera is sort of a uh, uh, all age disease. And these are figures that you see how this Vibrio with uh, goes around causing disease. You know? And uh, what have we done for cholera? We, I started on the bench uh, many, many years ago. I think from 80, I started on Shigella first when I came to ICTDRB, but then moved to cholera in the 1990s when 0139 emerged. Before that, cholera research was supposed to be old-fashioned at the ICDGRB. But when we, there was a new zero group, people started working on it and I was the first one to pick it up. And uh, it was soon realized after that, the problems of cholera cannot only be uh, solved with the oral rehydration solution or very good treatment. So we developed a rapid diagnostic tick with the monoclonal antibodies that was, that was developed uh, immediately after the 139 break, uh, broke out. I think uh, some people in the audience who are here probably know about uh, this uh, rapid diagnostic kits uh, from Jinnab. Uh, there they are people who know about it. And we just, we made, first we made a, a Bengal smart kit and then moved on to dipsticks. And uh, we also worked with uh, Ike Thompson to look at the 
and NGS uh, and sequencing of uh, genetic divergence of Vibrio cholerinae. And one microbiologist in my group, uh, Dr. Afrat, uh, Af Afrat is working on this with me. So we've uh, worked on, our main aim always is to prevent cholera, not only with ORS and medication, medication cannot prevent it and ORS cannot prevent it, but using immunoprophylactic tools like a most important vaccine. So I started working with uh, Dr. Jan Hamgren on uh, bivalent oral cholera vaccine, which is the O1039 vaccine, basically the vaccine that is now available. Uh, we started working on that. So uh, Jan used the uh, Ducorol vaccine, that component, uh, all the components from that and added O139 and we tested it in Bangladesh together with uh, Shamshu Zaman, who is from the Dhaka University, was that from the Dhaka University, I think he's again in the USA now. Then uh, this vaccine went through the process. Uh, I, I think before the O139 and before this collaboration, uh, this vaccine, uh, you know, that Ducorol is a vaccine that is quite expensive. You have to add buffer to it and all that. So uh, from, uh, from that Ducorol to make uh, the initiatives were taken with Vietnam, uh, which John Clemens and Jan Homgren and others worked on, and to make a vaccine that was aff affordable, did not need to have the cholera toxin be subunited, and and based on that, uh, the affordable cholera vaccine started being de developed, and I became part of this initiative also. I mean, Avate Parchina page. Okay. So our efforts on uh, cholera disease, uh, we've been studying from 2019, 90s, I think, or no, 1993s with uh, the Harvard group. And they're looking into cholera, not only in the patients, but also in the household context. This is a unique cohorts we are studying. And uh, we've had seven or eight studies that have been going on. And we have looked at uh, different uh, patients uh, cohorts and we have uh, actually thousands of patients and many, many thousands of uh, contacts in the households that we have studied. From that, we have understood a lot about cholera, how it spreads in the household, what are the protective factors, the B cells and the T cells and the pro-inflammatory responses. And Tofik, also a microbiologist, biologist basically has developed human monoclonal antibodies that is being used for as controls for vibrocytal acid. Uh, so we have been still, we are still working very a lot on cholera. It hasn't stopped and we have big cohorts that are still going on. So our work on cholera vaccines, of course it is the oral cholera vaccine and not the parenteral vaccine, has been to look at ways of controlling of endemic cholera and also preemptive vaccination to avoid epidemics. Based on the work that I started on the bench together with my collaborators, my investigators from Bangladesh and abroad, we have generated important evidence of OCV use in developing country set settings by dissemination of information and carrying out vac vaccination under very difficult circumstances. Uh, uh, I can say that uh, we were the first to use the vaccine in a in a uh, in a refugee camp, which was the, in Cox's Bazar, where we have carried out seven uh, um, campaigns with the cholera vaccine and have been able to control uh, cholera in Cox's Bazar in, among the uh, Myanmar nationals who came to Bangladesh, basically our refugees, although we don't call them refugees. And from that, we understand that uh, you can stop uh, epidemics. If there was an epidemic in the Ukhya and Kutupalong and these areas and Teknaf in, uh, in, uh, in 2017, when the refugees first came to Bangladesh, we would really be very, very, uh, we would have not only have the people, the refugees at risk, but also our host population in this. So this was something that helped us evade a, a, a major, uh, epidemic uh, in Bangladesh. We have not only worked with vaccines that have been produced in other countries, we also now have two locally produced oral cholera vaccines, which has 
which have completed phase one, phase two trials and a non inferiority trial. So Dr. Fahima and Dr. Taufik have completed this study on Colvax, which is locally produced in Bangladesh by Inceptor. Also, this is a very important initiative that this vaccine has been produced. And uh, this vaccine is licensed in Bangladesh for um, commercial purposes. We have also worked on another vaccine, which is even a simpler vaccine. It has one vaccine strain, which has, has been it's a recombinant strain that produces both the Inaba and the Okawa uh, serotypes. But in Colvax, you have to have four strains, five strains, which uh, have to be mixed together. But if Hilcol can be used after, after it has been developed further and phase three studies are carried out, we will have easy access to vaccines. Uh, what was happening? So I will talk a lot about SARS-CoV-2, but before that, let me talk about what we were doing in cholera in 2020, February. Uh, we had one of the biggest uh, cholera demonstration project because we have a national cholera control plan which has been formulated so that by 2030, the cholera can be eliminated in Bangladesh and in the rest of the world. And so this was our first step. We carried out a demonstration project in where 2.4 million doses of vaccine came from the WHO stockpile. And we did this in Dhaka city in six sanas. Any of you who were in Dhaka around that time and lived in Mirpur, Mohammedpur, and those areas uh, would know about this uh, demonstration project. And we vaccinated 1.2 million people from February 19 to 25th uh, February 2020, just before that epidemic. Our second campaign was expected for April 2020, but was stopped because of the pandemic, uh, which came in into Bangladesh in 2020. We used this vaccine, uh, which was in small plastic ampules made from uh, in Seoul by U Biologics. And uh, this was used in our vaccine uh, trial at that time. And not a vaccine trial, in the demonstration project. So we had planned to have the second dose of the vaccine. These are all two dose vaccines given in April, 2020, but it had to be stuck. The government could not, we, I mean, everything was under lockdown and many people had gone away to the villages. So we did not carry out the vaccine, uh, second dose of the vaccination. Then we met with the Global Task Force Cholera Control and the Bangladesh Director General of Health Services in December 2020. And it was decided that vaccination needs to be initiated. But since there was a long time that had elapsed, two doses needed to be given again. And so based on that, uh, we are now waiting with the demonstration project and we are having a meeting on the 2nd of January, 2022, to decide where to go with the vaccination, how to conduct it with COVID. And so I just mentioned to you about Cox's Bazaar. We finished, uh, we started from October, 2017 and, and, uh, and until uh, February, 2021, actually, uh, uh, 20, until, uh, 21 November, we have been carrying out campaigns. We've had seven campaigns. This was the, when you see the picture, this is one of the last campaigns. And we did the two doses of the vaccine in a large population. Because again, cholera outbreaks were happening over there. And we could go to Coxal Bazaar, but among the refugee population, that is the FDMN. So uh, not among the host population. So we, just to show you that because of the COVID-19 nationwide vaccination program, all vaccine other vaccine campaigns have to be have to be halted, and because of that, uh, only the EPI vaccinations are going on. So we moved from cholera to COVID in 2020, but I believe that we have to return to our existing problems again. Otherwise, these problems are going to magnify, and we know that there's a very high proportion of people taking antibiotics and drug resistance is on the increase in Bangladesh. So we have published a lot in cholera. We have, as Zeva pointed out, we have done large studies in Dhaka City to show that the oral cholera vaccine, uh, the WHO pre-qualified oral cholera vaccine, Shancol, 
has a prophylactic efficacy of 63% against severe dehydrating cholera episodes. And that's not a short, small matter because what we want to prevent is severely dehydrating cholera to prevent deaths. And uh, we have shown that uh, the vac vaccine can be kept at high temperature based on our studies of my colleagues. And it does not alter the vibrocidal antibody responses, which is used as a correlate of protection. And we've also used emergency deployment of uh, uh, COVID-19. But we have not only stuck to cholera, over the years, we have also done a lot of work on typhoid and paratyphoid fever. We have actually made a very important test that, that can be used to detect uh, typhoid infection, which is using the antibody in lymphocyte supernatant. But uh, we have carried out a lot of studies to understand the burden of typhoid fever in Dhaka. We are looking at, uh, uh, I mean, cholera is a very bad disease, but typhoid fever is no less. In fact, Typhoid fever brings in more complications because it has this undifferentiated fever. A child with fever or an adult with fever, you will not know what the person has. You will not have any signs or symptoms. It's, it's only fever, it can be only fever. So it can, so you can think it is dengue, you can think it is viral fever, you can think it is Talazar, it can, you can think it is malaria, but it can actually only be uh, typhoid fever. So we have done many studies and we know that the burden due to cholera is like 20 million cases worldwide, 200,000 deaths. So it's still a very big cause of concern all over the world, especially in Asia and Africa. In Bangladesh, our own studies uh, in the last four or five years have shown that typhoid fever has an um, incidence of two episodes per thousand person years. And the episode high incidence in children less than five years of age than in older persons. But it is also very high in older people. And we've shown that uh, in a study in a, in a hospitalized patients in Dhaka, we've shown that uh, there is 39% of typhoid uh, is caused by S type E and 44%, it is 5% from uh, with paratyphy. So paratyphy and typhoid are both very important in our community. And uh, we have carried out epidemiological studies from 2016 to January 2019 in Mirpur in three, two wards. And we've shown that uh, the, the, the passive surveillance that we are carrying out shows that just uh, fever with over 48 hours of duration. And most of these are typhoid fever using blood culture for measurement. And the incidence of typhoid fever is 161 per 100,000 person years. Typhoid fever is 43 per 100,000. So we have this disease, especially the typhoid fever, which can be avoided because there's a vaccine. So we've also looked at uh, phase one, phase two, a phase three B study with the typhoid vaccine in Dhaka. In the same area where we did the incidence study, we've taken three wards, ward two, three, and five, and we have vaccinated uh, people, children, nine months to less than uh, 16 years of age. And recently we've published the efficacy data showing that uh, the efficacy data showing that the level of, uh, uh, in, uh, we have about 81%, 90% efficacious this vaccine is in Bangladesh in children. So, with that vaccine away around in Bangladesh, we need to protect our children and also adults. And the vaccine is not very expensive. It, uh, it can be made in Bangladesh. There's, we are planning a phase one. Uh, we are planning a phase three study in Dhaka with a locally produced vaccine, the same type of conjugate vaccine that we used in, similar conjugate vaccine that we've used in this big trial, which is WHO approval. But our own vaccine still is not WHO approved because our BGDA does not have an approved uh, NRA. So we think that uh, both cholera and typhoid fever needs to be eliminated from our settings. And the Gavi can help introduce uh, vaccines, typhoid vaccine into many countries in the world. And Pakistan has already introduced, is also in, has got Gavi support to introduce it in their children because they have, uh, uh, 
chloroquinolone and uh, ciprosporin resistance typhoid in the country. So it has now is becoming uh, routine to use it in immunization. 9.8 million children have been vaccinated in November and more uh, campaigns have been carried out. In Liberia, uh, it has been approved in May 2019 and in Zimbabwe in May 2019 and it will be introduced in 2020. So uh, we are fighting hard to introduce this vaccine in Bangladesh. Our NITAC has finally recommended Bangladesh NITAC uh, to the CRO that Gavi support should be requested to have the vaccine in our EPI system in Bangladesh for uh, to control the disease. So uh, we have been very successful in, in the introduction of new vaccines in IPI. In fact, if you consider Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and other developing countries, Bangladesh has always been very quick in introducing vaccines. First of all, the EPI in 1979 was very successful. And uh, then the five dose uh, TTT vaccination was carried out from 1993. Polio eradication and the measles uh, program started in 1995. Then um, we've been doing very good surveillance for polio, AFP, and, uh, and um, and neonatal tit uh, tetanus from 1997. So when Bangladesh wants something, Gavi knows that if this country brings a vaccine under the Gavi program, and if it supports with funding, then this can become a successful vaccine. So I can show you, I, I've put in all the successes over here on polio vaccine, measles, hip penta, measles rubella, and we must go into new vaccines like the cholera vaccine, the typhoid vaccine, rotavirus vaccine, the HPV vaccine, which all need to be introduced. Because of the cholera control of polio in Bangladesh, uh, polio of polio in Bangladesh, uh, our my very well regarded, highly regarded Professor Amar Khan, who has been with us, who was with us during all these uh, series of uh, cholera and typhoid programs that we've carried out until he passed away. And uh, he has been very uh, successful in working on polio and maintaining a polio free status since 2000 in Bangladesh. And any case that has come has been due to imported cases. And uh, we have uh, been very good in, we've also been very successful in getting many prizes uh, from 2018, uh, 2008 onwards. And uh, because EPI is a pro priority program for the Bangladesh government. Even with COVID, for a few months, the program was uh, actually swayed. But soon after that, Bangladesh went back and started house to house vaccination and many other things to go come back on its feet with uh, polio. We have many very good multi year immunization plans for Bangladesh. And uh, we now have a functional night tag, which was not there before. We have introduced uh, 11 vaccines in, into our. EPI program. We also have many other things in 64 districts in Bangladesh for immunization coverage. And uh, most recently, we also have uh, uh, EPI CS, which has been published in 2020. But everything has been hampered with, uh, I can say everything has been hampered with the COVID, the COVID pandemic in Bangladesh. So Bangladesh has been receiving recognition for its success. The Vaccine Hero Award from Gavi went to uh, our uh, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina for, for the work she's done. And uh, we have been very successful. So we have many targets for Bangladesh. The elimination of infectious disease by 2030. One is virus diarrhea by rotavirus vaccine, cholera. Typhoid fever by the two vaccines I talked about, HPV infection and cervical cancer is an infectious cancer that can be avoided if children, young girls are vaccinated uh, in schools. And so we did have a demonstration program for HPV vaccination, but uh, unfortunately, this could not be carried out further. But I'm sure we are now going to start on it again because um, cervical cancer is very common in Bangladesh. And also, Rabies pre-exposure 
vaccine in high risk group and we also have a very good post exposure profile uh, post exposure prophylaxis based on a rabies vaccine produced in vero cells that is available in bangladesh the the the, sick, the call now is zero human rabies death from dog transmitted disease over 95% of the rabies you see in bangladesh is due to the dog bite and it's because of the bangladeshi vaccine that this rabies vaccine has been available in bangladesh produced in vero cell we have carried out uh, a fill finish this was first carried out by a fill finish vaccine but now they have their own vaccine in icd drb and dr tafik has and uh, dr fahima has finished a, a non inferiority study showing that the rabies vaccine produced by bangladesh company is similar and not non inferior to the vaccine produced globally so also we are working on jay vax jay infections and meningitis and hep b infection in newborn uh, in newborns and high risk groups so there are many available vaccines i will just go quickly uh, we have vaccines for pregnant women for newborn our vaccines have been extended into the second year of life uh, not only in the first nine months children are going from 2 to 7 years i getting booster doses of diphtheria tetanus toxoid we saw that among the rohingya population we had diphtheria outbreaks after many years and now boosters are being given to everyone uh, to our children which was very important and we have also have inclusion of influenza vaccine for pregnant women and young children so i think uh, we are doing very well for vaccines but we since we are emerging into a uh, from a lower income country to a lower middle income country to a developing developed country status in the few years we have we are going to have a problem also so because then we have to pay for most of our vaccines and before that happens i would like to see our local companies producing all the important vaccines that we need and so we don't have to spend dollars on buying all these vaccines from abroad so uh, so looking at vaccines for uh, infants and children uh, why did we why are we working on these vaccines we know that the vi polysaccharide vaccine available in the market does not work well in children the oral typhoid vaccine also does not work in children because of the prob problems with the oral route of in, uh, immunization and the lower immune responses due to the large number of pathogens and gut microbiota in our in, a, in our young children even the oral cholera vaccine is less immunogenic in young children so we are looking at many different we have looked at many different strategies for improvement of vaccines looking at antiparasitic drugs use of zinc and then formulation of vaccine for vaccine for young children in liquid formulation so when we when we had uh, covid-19 come to bangladesh we did not stop all our work uh, contrary to what many labs were forced to do we moved from a cholera lab to a covid lab and i just want to show you what we've did, done so we used all the facilities that we had all our young scientists mid level scientists started working on covid-19 because we had everything for cholera for typhoid that could be used for covid and we also moved to make many of our labs both at icdgrb and ideshi a bsl2 plus facility so that we could work with covid-19 uh and i just want to remind you that we are not afraid of omicron we have gone through many phases of the pandemic and we think that we will be able to overcome this one too and uh, this is a slide uh, from the web page and we know that there are many vaccines uh, candidates in development for covid-19 and uh, there have been uh, one and a half years time there have been 184 candidates and there are 112 vaccine candidates 20 candidates are in emergency authorization for use globally in bangladesh seven vaccines are now dgd approved and these are uh, that can be used right now we have 
Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, and the uh, Sinovac, uh, Sinopharm vaccines that are being used in Bangladesh for our population. We have about 35% coverage of vaccines, not bad for, um, and we want to achieve 70% coverage by next three months. So I, I just want to show you some of the data that we have that we used to, uh, that we've uh, obtained and we've published on COVID. We showed very early between April to October, 2020, uh, Marjahan and Taufik in our group together with other investigators at ICDDRB and the IDCI showed that the national zero prevalence level for COVID-19 for the receptor binding domain of uh, spike protein was like uh, national level was 51.8%. In Dhaka city, it was 45.4% 45, 50, 45 in non-slum and 74.6 in the slum areas. In outside areas, it was 588 in the outside Dhaka, uh, in the urban area, and 50 in the rural area, not much difference. But uh, from July to August 2020, uh, in Dhaka city, we showed that there was a difference between high socioeconomic and low socioeconomic uh, people. And we saw higher frequency of antibody responses in high socioeconomic uh, group in high density areas due to probably higher level of nutritional status behavioral practices as well as household uh, size. But we've also carried out a study recently from March to June 2021, followed it up to September, and we've shown that around 90% of the people are now positive for uh, SARS-CoV-2 and IgG antibodies. As a site, very rural, which is in Shitakundu. Some of you must come be coming from Chittagong, and it's very high in Shitakundu area where we do a lot of our work. So, we have looked at uh, specific uh, SARS-CoV-2 specific antibodies, the dis dis different disease service as a uh, severity, Dr. Fahima in our group together with Tafik and others have shown that uh, if you have more severe disease, your antibody levels are higher. With less severe and asymptomatic uh, cases, the antibody levels are lower. With more severe diseases, the antibody level uh, in, remains uh, high. Whereas uh, in uh, patients uh, with uh, less severe disease, it falls very quickly, especially in asymptomatic cases. We've also shown that patients uh, who have had COVID have boosted, they have very high responses to COVID vaccines, especially the AstraZeneca vaccine. We've also, Tafik has, uh, and his team have also looked at the activation induced markers in CD4 T cells in patients with COVID-19 disease and have shown that the CD4 AIM markers have increased significantly in COVID patients compared to the pre-pandemic participants. We had PBMC in liquid nitrogen in our stock, and we used that. And uh, no difference was observed in the CD8 uh, T cell and AIMS marker. So this is a very good result from our team showing that the T cells are also very involved, and the CD4 T cells are, have a big part to play in COVID-19. And uh, we are carrying out a surveillance together with IDCR, our national institute, to determine the efficacy and immunogenicity of COVID-19. For this, we are working together with the government in eight divisions of Dhaka City uh, of uh, Bangladesh. And, uh, and we are collecting blood from uh, vaccinees who are 18 years and above in age. And uh, we have eight, nine sites in eight divisions of Bangladesh. And we have over 6,000 subjects that we are following up up to two years. And uh, we've looked at the magnitude of responses until six months of COVID shield vaccination. And we've shown that uh, at pre-vaccination, the levels are lower, but it's not zero. As you can see over here, about 80% can be positive. And by month two, uh, that is one month after the first dose, uh, the levels go up. Uh, one month, um, one month after the second dose, the vaccine uh, also the, the vaccine uh, geometric mean titer goes up, and then even six months later, the levels are not have gone down as is what is predicted for by the classic antibody theory. But it's still not had has not completely decreased, so it's still much higher than the pre-vaccination 
uh, levels that we see over here. So, so uh, you know that boosters have started in Bangladesh. Just, I mean, I have also got my booster, so uh, I'd have to see. I have had uh, infection by three different types of variants of COVID, and my the last uh, one that I had was in November. And was it November? No, so much was it November? November 2021, and and then I had symptomatic disease, and I have taken the booster also. After symptomat my when I took the AstraZeneca two doses, my antibody responses went up to eight thousand, fell down quite a lot after a few months. But when I got the uh, Delta variant infection, my antibody levels went up to thirty thousand nanograms per mm. But after that one month, I've taken a COVID uh, booster, and I'm going waiting with Pfizer vaccine. And I'm waiting to see my immune response and topic and my Jahana going to measure it for me. Sunday, you must take my vaccine. So I think uh, what we have seen that uh, we've got four vaccines in our system now in our national vaccination campaigns. And you can see the titles of the four vaccines. Uh, and we see that to Moderna, the levels are very high. To Pfizer, it is very high. But to Covishield, it is uh, less than Pfizer and Moderna, but to the Sinopharm is much lower, but that doesn't matter because we know that all these vaccines are efficacious in different ways. Yeah, they've all shown to be uh, efficacious at from 90% to 60%. So I think uh, getting these vaccines are very important for us. These are our own results. And we have also looked at uh, We've also looked at the IgG seropositive uh, positivity after first and second doses of different vaccinations. And we see that the, from pre-vaccination, the, by the second vaccination, almost 100% of pe people have seroconverted to all, in all the uh, four different vaccines. So this is also very encouraging for us. And now we are right, looking forward to seeing what the booster does. And I'll be one of the first people to give blood uh, for the boosters to my to my team. So uh, we've also doing a, we've been trying to do a lot of phase two, phase three studies, especially phase three studies, but we have not had permission from these for these studies yet because the government is very careful. They're trying to see, first trying to show that, trying to see that vaccines become available to vaccine, uh, Bangladesh. The ones that have emergency use authorization before they give us permission to test new vaccines. But I'm sure we, are, we will get new vaccines to do. But uh, Dr. Farhana in our group and Dr. Taufik, including uh, uh, Taufik Rahman and others, are looking at uh, a sp different design, a test negative design in Bangladesh to look at vaccine effectiveness. So people who have been given any four of the vaccines who are coming back to the hospitals with uh, COVID-like symptoms are tested for COVID by our team. And if they are positive, they are called test positive, if they're negative, they are the controls. So they test negative. And so it's, we're trying to look at the differences in patients, in people who got the vaccine and were, came to hospitalization, followed them up. We are following them up for uh, six months, I think. And we are looking at cases, one case to four control, so that we are not biased. And uh, we have finished enrollment, the, the number of requisite and that we need for improvement and we're not looking at the data. This will be very important data for Bangladesh to show whether patients recruited at four of the COVID hospitals do have less disease or have similar diseases as those who have not been vaccinated. And so this will be very important for us. And so we are taking lots of initiatives on COVID-19 using our experience on other vaccines, other infectious diseases. And these are the two vaccine studies that we have uh, designed and we hope we can initiate or go forward in Bangladesh. There are, we're also planning and looking forward to local vaccines being developed, protein subunit and other RNA vaccines in Bangladesh that should be carried out and are being carried out. So there's a large scale uh, vaccination in Bangladesh and uh, from 27 January, 2021. And now uh, everybody's working together, the Bangladesh Armed Forces are working together with uh, the general public in uh, even dropping the vaccines in the helicopters um, in different areas. Our EPI, our national um, yeah. um, 
support staff in the field who are who deliver EPI vaccines are also working. And I, I would say that the vaccination has been carried out very, very successfully. And we are not way behind in genomics. Afra, the microbiologist basically, is work, working together with us and also Sadia and also people from Aideshi. And we have shown, we are taking active part in genomics use the, using the Minine, Nanopore Minine platform. And we will also go on to the MySec platform later on. And we have shown uh, the, uh, by the Nature Microbiology uh, publication that uh, how Bangladesh had started the pandemic and how during the lockdown and in the national holidays, uh, the COVID strains isolates uh, spread all over Bangladesh. And in this paper, we have used the help of international organizations, also the A2I innovation of the prime minister's office to look at uh, how, how the digital mobile phone could help us in uh, uh, tracing the people who live, left Dhaka. And now we have also done Minayan sequencing on the Omicron strains. And uh, we have uh, uh, working at Aideshi uh, on COVID-19 detection by RT-PCR, but also on uh, genomic, genomic analysis. And we've actually the, one of the first to do the uh, Minayan-based sequencing of COVID-19 genome. And we have uh, also worked on all the different variants, and I've always been the first to come up with uh, just said submission of uh, uh, the new variant. And we have now uh, submitted seven uh, uh, genomes of the sequences of Omicron to just said, and also shown that uh, how a foreign traveler came, came to Bangladesh, a Bangladeshi person coming to Bangladesh from Europe then infected three people in his family with the Omicron. And this is how it spreads. So I don't want to talk about Aideshi today, but just to say that during COVID-19, we moved not only for, from doing genetic disorder studies, but becoming a major COVID lab, lab in Bangladesh. And we have worked on drug trials, on we are working on vaccine studies, we are working on minion sequencing, and so, in Aideshi was, was the, one of the first four or one of the first in organizations that uh, tested, uh, started testing for COVID-19 using RT-PCR because we had all the facilities there. And we've also tested over 40,000 samples of COVID-19. And we are WHO uh, pre-qualified in this testing. We gave our results to IDCR every time and we maintain quality control. So to finish it all, I would say that the SDGs are very important for us. And for us, COVID-19 has made it very difficult uh, to, uh, to follow the SDGs, like it has been difficult to follow all the vaccines for Bangladesh. And, but if we have to eliminate COVID-19 globally, we, that's gotten, uh, I, Bangladesh has to be a part of it in the elimination program, because as I believe that COVID Anywhere is COVID everywhere. It doesn't take COVID long to transfer from one country to another, as we are seeing with all the variants. So vaccinations, boosters, mass camp campaigns are important for the better life of us. And we knew that for cholera, wash was important. But now we know that for COVID-19 also, wash is very important, water, sanitation, hygiene, hand washing. So together we can overcome many of these diseases. So the SDG3, aspires to ensure health and well-being for all. And we have a bold commitment to end the epidemics of all the other diseases, and of course, all the communicable diseases by 2030. So I would say that microbiologists are working at every field in this work, in my team at PIVO at ICDDRB, and globally, and at IDESHI. So with that, I thank all of you, and I thank all my collaborators and my big group of people everywhere in the world, and also Ashfaq and all others who are here who have one time or other worked with us at ICDTRB or at the university. Thank you very much.